Okay, I'm here in the garage at my house, the little machines, and I took some clips. I posted a, a an Instagram post of a big forging, on, an aluminum forging that I was doing some machine work on, and technically speaking, I can't really make videos of this part being machined, but I, I did the bore. There's a long bore that goes through this. This is a 30 inch long part, and I thought this was in interesting enough, and I started making a some stuff for Instagram so I took everything in the vertical format on my phone I, I took all these clips with my phone while I was machining the part and uh, it, it when I put it all together it kind of ended up being kind of long for Instagram and I thought well I don't really want to waste all this effort and everything and I thought I'd post it as a YouTube video um, but don't ask me what the parts for and and anything like that because I really can't tell you that and so you, even if you ask, I'm not going to tell you, so, so don't waste your time. But anyway, I thought it would, it would sort of, it's kind of um, going to be all in the middle of the screen, you know, vertical format, but horizontal because of the, the way um, YouTube works. And, and um, I don't know, let me know what you think in the comments, you know, is this even worth showing something like this to you? I don't know. I changed tool assignments and I forgot to change that number. It was on the wrong offset. That could have been a total disaster with a tool this long. So that's why I stopped it so that I could change this because it, it was tool uh, 33, I think, and I changed it to tool 48, but I forgot to change that height offset right there. This is the way I, I uh, bore the hole out after drilling it four and a half inches. Then I uh, bore it out. I've got to open it up to seven and a half inches. And what I found is the easiest way. I, the first time I did this part a long time ago, I, I, you know, helical milled it down with a long face mill from both sides to kind of rough out close to the seven and a half. But I found that it's just as easy just to bore it out. And I stepped this boring bar out in, in core steps, say a hundred thousandths at a time, which takes 200 thousandths off the diameter and just bore it over and over again until I get close and then I start using the boring head itself. 
I'll have to change this bar to a longer one as I get further out. So what I do is I bring, I jog the, the head up close to here, and then I loosen these, um, let's see if I can do this one-handed. I loosen these screws on the boring head, and I just kind of eyeball another hundred thousandths or so. It's not that critical at this point because I got quite a ways to go out. So I'd say I'm gonna take about that much more in the next pass. Then as I get out bigger, I can change this, uh, it's kind of hard to do this one-handed. I can change this bar out to a larger bar on the head. So this would be the, the longer bar that I can mount in here as I get bigger in diameter, but I have to be, you know, big enough to fit this in there. So I have to um, use this one and stick it out a little at a time here until I can fit this in. And then I can finish the seven and a half inch diameter with this one. Okay, we're getting closer. Every time I adjust that boring head, just to make sure I don't forget that I, um, you know, zero return the machine back or out of the way. I've got it in the program here. And then it goes back up to G4, I mean, uh, N49, excuse me, which is where the boring bar starts its next pass. So if I put, if I put the machine into memory here and push cycle start here, it will automatically retract the tool so that when the part rotates, it doesn't hit the tool. There's too much coolant here, so I gotta close the doors. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can film this. I'm indicating with the dial indicator up and down the bore to where the, the two boring cycles meet each other. In an ideal world, this should be perfect and they should be lined up with each other, but in reality, you see there's about a two thousandths step in there on the side. The, the bottom and the top I measured and, it's, and it, there's no real deviation. So, we look at this, sorry about the camera, I'm trying to hold the phone here, it's very tight. So this is where the indicator is going to fall away right here. So the back of the bore, let's see if I can jog it back on there. The back of the bore is falling away. Let's go all the way down in there now again. Right about there. Falling away about a little over two thousandths of an inch. So let's think about this a little bit. This, um, the indicator is falling away, so the step is going this direction between the two bores. So we need to shift this one over towards it and the other one the other direction on the two offsets to get this lined up. Now I've still got about a, um, 120 thousandths to come out of the bore so I can I can mess around with these offsets a little bit and then feel in there and, and get them lined up. And like I say, in an ideal world, this would be, uh, everything would be perfect. And if I was lined up on one side and I centered up here and I was lined up on this side and the block was straight, everything would be good. But it's not an ideal world, a world, and it never works out that way. It's a little bit off. It's only a thousandth of an inch because it's two thousandths total, so it's a thousandth of an inch on each offset. So I can move this one this way, and I actually have to move this the other one, I think, the same direction, believe it or not, because when we're rotated around, it's going to be the same. What I'm going to do is rotate the part around to the other offset. This is the back side, the G55. G54 is the first side, 
and I'm going to run the dial indicator down there again and see what uh, what I get. So let me get that lined up and we'll look at it again. Okay, I'm trying to hold this as steady as I can. So now we're zeroed on the side of the bore again. And see it falls off about the same amount, two and a half, almost three. If I can get this light. On this side, it's almost three thousandths. So we're gonna have to move the offsets. Actually, we've got to move the offsets the same direction. So this one's got to come more towards the minus side, and the other one's got to come more towards the minus side to line up with each other. Because the indicator that's falling away on the indicator right there. Okay, we're looking at my dial indicator setup. I got it on this long face mill holder, stuck onto it, and, and then I'm trying to get the side of the bore. The up and down is good. I can I, I indicated on the bottom and, the, and it's lined up good. So it's just gotta be shifted this direction and both offsets gotta be shifted this way, about a thousandth or so, maybe a hair more than a thousandth of an inch. So. Well, because I still got 120 thousandths more to come out of the bore, I can experiment a little bit here. So I'm going to put the boring head back in the spindle, and I'm going to shift each offset over in the minus direction. G54 and G55 is the back side when it's coming in to get everything lined up. And like I say, in the ideal world, this shouldn't be necessary, but it always is a little bit necessary to shift the offsets just a hair. Okay, we're going to put it in the incremental mode which means you gotta go shift I and I'll push the input key and it should change that to the incremental mode. So now we're in the incremental mode. I'm gonna come over to 41 is the, is the X offset, a G54. So in over here in these fields, I gotta type in 41 and I'm gonna go minus a thousandth of an inch just to start with. thousandth of an inch I'm gonna hit input it should go to 75 6 right and then I'm also gonna go on G55 I'm gonna also go minus a thousandth of an inch so we got to run this down to 51 which is the, the X offset for G55 I'm gonna also go minus thousandth I'm gonna hit input that should go to 74, right? So when I probed this, there was about a thousandth of an inch difference. Well, a little less than a thousandth difference between the two offsets. So we'll see how that works. And then we'll, we'll keep, you know, massaging that offset till we get those uh, bores to line up with each other. Okay, here's some, um, after making some adjustments and I've bored it out a little bit bigger, this is probably about as good as I'm going to get it. And that's the overlap of the two boring cycles. They're overlapping about a hundred thousand each direction. On the other side, it's a little bit better. As we saw when I rotated around, it was about a little more, almost three thousandths, and on this side it was a little bit more than two thousandths, or around two thousandths. So this is probably as good as I'm going to get it. It's, they're matching up within a half a thousandth of each other, or a thousandth total, I guess. See, you see the overlap of the two cycles there. So I guess I'm going to have to be happy with that. I don't, I don't want to change things. I've got 50 thousandths more to come out of the bore and I don't really want to take the boring head out again to a, um, to check this until I get out to size because I don't like to take it in and out. It's such a long tool and, and if there's any inaccuracy in the way it makes up in the spindle, I don't really want to uh, chance that. So I'm going to take it out to finish size and, and I'm going to call this good. Also, I was taking a uh, I took 50 thousandths at one pass off the diameter 
on that last one, and so maybe also that had a little push off on the tool. So I'm gonna, that's four eight thousandths, twelve thousandths. We're gonna take a twelve thousandths pass here and see where we're at. I don't wanna get too carried away. The, the dimension is uh, seven and a half inches plus or minus five, so it shouldn't be too hard to get it there. And let's see if I can measure this thing one handed. Okay, right on seven and a half on that end. Okay, let's see what it is on the other end of the part. I can do this. Okay, right on seven and a half. So that's the bore, and that's how I do it in this part kind of a little bit of a fiddle. You gotta move the offsets back and forth to get things lined up in the middle. And you would think that you wouldn't need to do that, but everything is not just exactly perfect. Oh, here's what the offsets ended up being. Because this is slightly off center, we're going around the zero point of the machine. So if this is uh, 75 thousandths positive, then this one has to be 75 thousandths negative. So you see how close they ended up being to each other. They're only a tenth of a thousand different. So actually that's pretty good, but it, the probe, maybe the probe is not calibrated exactly perfect and it's not hitting the center of the part when I probe the outside of the, of the part, maybe. Here's something new I'm working on right at the moment. I noticed when I was um, working on the truck, I looked for my bevel gauges. I, I must have three or four of these things somewhere. I used to do a lot of woodwork and I used to have these tools, but I couldn't find one single one of them. So I'm gonna make a new one. And I've been uh, working on the parts here in the garage to do this. I'm gonna make a video on making this bevel gauge. I know I could buy one or a lot cheaper than I could make it, but I thought it might be an interesting project. So this is possibly gonna be some upcoming videos on this.